Hey guys, today we're going to be setting floor trusses. We're going to be explaining where to flush the heel at, how to do relief cuts, and how to properly attach it to the load bear points. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is identify what floor trusses go where. Um, I use my phone for this, so we'll pull up the floor truss layout. We're starting on the far end of the house, and we have nine F2s and three F3s. I like to look around and get to know the truss pile and um, start laying them around the foundation so that we can boom them out with the telly if, if possible. So we'll go get the F2s and F3s and put them in location. The important thing to pay attention to is the tags. When you're laying your trusses around the foundation you want to put your tags where they're supposed to go. And on in this house the tags going along this back wall. So we're going to slide all our trusses back there. This lines up things. The tag is important because it lines up things in the truss like load bear points or HVAC chases. So always follow the tags and keep them the same direction. Okay, so we got all our floor trusses up here with our tags to the back. And we're going to start on this longest run and flush up the heel of the truss with the sill plate. Um, you can see that these heels aren't always perfect, so communicate with the guy on the other end to make sure that you're lining up as well as possible. Okay, so we're nailing this off. We got our line here, our X is underneath. Now, it's not super important to get it right on this line, but we'll do that. This is the very important part, is making sure this is flush. And then you take your galvanized nails, since you're going into treated lumber, you gotta aim the gun towards these holes right here. Just like that. We'll do three on each side. And as you go down the line, communicate with the other heel, whoever's on the other end, to tell you when it makes sense. Because you don't know if this is the right measurement to flush or if this is the right measurement to flush. It should be this bottom board right here. How's the next one? Yep. How are we there? Okay, so right here, we have a line and a bolt, and we're just gonna push it tight to the bolt and nail it there. You do not wanna cut this. You do not want to cut the bolt and you don't want to cut the plate so just move the truss you don't have to move it on the other end it will just angle the truss a little bit how's that looks good we like perfect okay so we're on the other side now and you can see these flushed up pretty well which means we set this sill plate real nice so we're going to nail off this side same thing um, we try and get it on the line but it doesn't have to be perfect this is what we care about, but it's already set based off our longest run. Okay, the last thing we need to do is make what we call relief cuts. And it's, it's basically, they build two trusses in one, and then we just cut it right here, and it drops down the crown and sits on the wall. After we make all these cuts, we're going to come back and put shims in to level it out perfectly. Because we build our walls about a quarter inch short, and that gives us room to adjust our shims. The important part is cutting right through this gap between the plates. You can see there's an end board on each of these trusses. We have to cut through this board. So what I like to do is put my hammer under here since we're floating, and I spin it down, and that supports the truss so that it doesn't bind your saw, hopefully. Another thing you can do if you're worried about uh, hitting the metal with your saw blade is draw a square line so you can cut right through the center there. Set your saw up. There you go. If I didn't have my hammer here, it would drop down and bind the saw. So now I got my hammer. Pull that out. You want to make it, you want to keep cutting it until it's sitting on the wall. You can do two or three passes.
Okay, we got one done. Now we'll go down this whole load bear wall and make the relief cuts. Be sure to only cut where there's a load bear point. You do not want to cut the truss if it's not a relief cut. Okay, we got all our relief cuts made. So now we're gonna go ahead and nail them down. First thing to do is level it because we don't know how far to shim up that load bear point. So I'm gonna take the laser, set it in the middle of the truss, and I'm gonna use my hand to aim it. I wanna make sure that it's hitting in the middle of the truss out here. And that will make sure that it's straight all the way down so I don't have to adjust the laser. Right on the money. So on the other end of the house, we're spot on. Concrete just did a good job. And right here, you can see we're about 3 8 low. So we're going to shim this part up. Okay, so we got our end one. Now we're going to go to the next load bear wall and level the middle of that. And the reason we're jumping around here is so that we can level across the trusses. That's the important part. But since this middle is set off the ends, we want to do it first and then do this one first. And that will allow us to kind of average everything out if the concrete's a little bit off here and there. But we don't want any significant bumps between trusses. So once, once we get this middle set, we'll go down that line. Okay, so we got the first truss of this run leveled. It's spot on here compared to each end. Now, before we nail it to this load bear wall, we have to make sure that this wall is plumb. So we can just take our laser and set it on top of the wall and shoot down to our bottom plate. We're gonna go right over the edge. I'm about 16th off the edge and I'm touching the bottom plate down there. So that means we're within tolerances. We're 16th out of plumb here. So I can nail this. And I want to do that a few points throughout this wall. Because you don't want to nail a wall, nail the trusses to the wall if the wall's leaning, especially over doors. Okay, so now we're going to nail them off. Remember to check plumb on your wall and nail your truss on your line here that we marked out for layout. So I'm right on the edge of the plate. 16th off, about a 16th off down below. So our wall is plumb. And we'll nail non galvanized right through the shims. I like to nail it plumb in a couple places and then go down and nail the whole wall. So right past our plate down there, right past our plate here. Check the line. Good. If you're getting any value out of this video, please subscribe. Okay, so we got our floor trusses all flushed up, nailed off, low bear point, shimmed level, and plumb. So we're gonna go ahead and roll the rest of the floor trusses out. Um, can you help Ethan on this part? Cause like. This will go down a little. So we got our floor trusses set around our staircase opening. And this is an important part we pay attention to when, before we nail the trusses. So right here on this end of the staircase, we have a double truss. Now, since this is the staircase opening, we only want to care about this line. Because when we butt these trusses together, they are going to be wider than this. There's just no way for all this metal and stuff to not, to not expand it. So what we care about is this line right here because it's on the inside of the stairs. So we're gonna nail this and then we're gonna pull our staircase measurement from inside to inside. And that's gonna allow us to nail the trusses in the right direction. 
If we cared about this line over here, it would shrink our staircase opening down and it would be wrong based on the print. Now we'll pull our staircase opening off of that truss to nail this other one. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is nail off our truss heels on this load bear wall. But before we do that, we have to check level because we keep our load bear walls about a quarter inch short. We're gonna check level across here with the laser to make sure that this floor is level front to back and side to side. So we might have to shim up each of these trusses as we go. Okay, so we got our laser up here. It's sitting on this end truss that we already nailed to the wall at the right height. And we're lasering across these heels to the other truss on the other side. When we nailed this, we made sure that this wall is plumb so that it lines up flush with all these heels as we plumb it. When we nail this heel and all these heels, we wanna make sure and plumb this wall so that these heels line up flush. Over here, we're at two and 15 sixteenths which is a 16th off from there. And right next to it, we're at three and a quarter, which means the concrete dips down a quarter inch here. So we're gonna shim this truss up to level it off and then shim all these trusses so that it's perfectly in line. Don't forget to flush this up when you nail the shims. And barely up at all. Okay, so right here, we don't have a truss that goes here, but the subfloor is gonna wrap around the staircase. It's gonna be a little ledge so that our exterior wall can sit on, and there's gonna be a little ledge, a shelf next to the staircase. So we're gonna build a wall here and here so that we can sheet right over this with our subfloor. Okay, so there you have it, an artificial ladder truss. Uh, we planed the top of this one to line it up perfectly with the trusses. And now we'll sheet right over this. Making When we sheet this, we're gonna make sure both of these are plumb so that our walls continue straight up. Okay, so we got all our floor trusses set. We just wanna show you guys this detail here. These are top cord bearing trusses. So the top part of the truss sticks out over this LVL. In this scenario, we're good to just nail them off as is. But if these were on the exterior of a house, like a zero entry with top cord bearing trusses, we would wanna come back and put blocking in here because of the exterior wall sitting and the load going down. So we don't have a rim board on this part of the truss, so we have to put blocking to carry the load. Okay, last thing we'll mention is that these trusses are flushing up on an actual wall, not the sill plate. This is very common for second story or a half basement like this. Before we set these trusses, we string this wall. We don't care about plumb as much. We'll plumb each corner, each end, and then we'll string it and measure off an inch and a half, the thickness of our blocks, to make sure that this wall is perfectly straight. So then when we flush up our heels, we know that our subfloor and our next, next walls of the house are gonna be perfectly straight as well. Okay, so we got our entire floor set. All the trusses are lined up real well on the sill plate. Our longest runs are what we flushed to. And we went through and leveled the entire floor, shimming where we had to. It takes a while to do this, but it really pays off for the rest of the framing and all of the subs that come after us. Up next, we're gonna be sheeting the floor 
So click here to watch that video. And if you want to see an in-depth video on every single part of the house build, subscribe to our channel for more.